Hey you, thanks for joining me again. I'm Richard Bay, of course, and this is Richard Bay Talk, and I am here with my Barack Obama mug. Oh, by the way, it's got uh, his birth certificate on the other side. And today I'm wearing my ah, free UK crane t-shirt. There you go. All right, so I am a, a signpost of political activism. I'm That's here with very Al nice. Oh, thank you. This is Albert Reynoso, who's the producer on this show and uh, doing a great job of it. And uh, we have our debates as well. And over the course of the week, I, I had one person who watches these say to me, why don't you bring somebody on with a different point of view? Why don't you debate somebody from the other side? I don't know. The other side, you mean like a Putin apologist or something? Uh, which is something you do hear sometimes on talk radio. Uh, but we're not going to do that. But I am going to tell you about the debates I've had over the week with friends. Uh, I'm in a, a political Zoom meeting where we meet every week and talk, and with other radio talk show hosts. And it's all about Ukraine. And I've heard everything from the silly to the sublime, and I have my own recommendations. Albert, you want to jump in at any time? Uh, you could be the other side. Give me the contrary. I will be the other side today. Okay. Okay. So first of all, let's go with some of the silly proposals. One of them is, why doesn't Ukraine bomb Moscow? <laughs> well, I don't really think that's so silly to tell you the well, truth. How, 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 how would that happen? How would that happen? Well, how they would that happen? How would that happen? Has to be figured out but, but now <laughs> that, if 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 you knew that they could would you say that's a good idea no why not because that's not going to stop putin and that's going to give him the pretense to actually escalate the war over there i think it's a silly idea i don't even think uh i, I as far as i understand uh ukraine doesn't have any bombers all their bombers were destroyed uh, when was it in the nineties? I believe it was as part of that, uh, uh, of recognizing their independence. So, you know, when they had to give up their nuclear arms, they had to destroy all their Russian made bombers as well. So I don't even think they have a bomber. And I think that would be a, a silly escalation of the war. It would certainly turn every Russian super patriotic and say, and it would justify, uh, Putin's BS about uh, Ukraine uh, being a danger to Russia, which everybody knows wasn't true at all. So, you know, yeah. So, so more Ukrainians should be killed well, just so well, the war doesn't get escalated. No, but Moscow, bombing Moscow isn't going to keep Ukrainians from being killed. Let okay, me okay. The, let, let, let me ask right. you another question then. Let's suppose well, it's uh, not Ukraine. Let's suppose it's England or the United States. Let's suppose inst instead of the uh, instead of the Japanese coming coming around in 1941, it was the Russians. Do we just stay back so we don't escalate? I'm just curious about this. Or well, do you escalate? Uh, Russia has not bombed the United States, so there's no. Uh, no, I understand. All right, that. Albert, we're going to be chasing a cat's okay, tail. All right. this, okay. You just you you will not you will not allow any any retaliation. By the uh, by who? By Ukraine. By Ukraine uh, against Russia? Yeah, I think it's counterproductive. That's okay. So think. that's that's okay. That's that's what I'm trying to figure out. Uh, you it, do not it, you know you do not go for it. All right, here we are. Okay, that's yeah. it. That's yeah. fine. Okay, I think it 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 justifies Putin's fear that Ukraine is a danger to Russia. It turns off, even though there is a portion of the Russian population now that is sympathetic to Ukraine. It will turn them, turn every person in Russia into a patriotic Russia. My country's been attacked just like the Nazis did. Okay, so it's, I believe it's counterproductive. All right, the next silly uh, idea was uh, we should make uh, Zelensky an honorary U.S. citizen, uh, as we did with Winston Churchill. I think we've done it in, uh, some other time. Uh, we've conferred honorary U.S. citizenship on a, on a foreign leader whom we find admirable and an ally. I think that as well is counterproductive. It justifies Putin's allegation that Zelensky is a puppet of the United States. 
and it doesn't it, it doesn't help anything. Maybe when this war is over, okay. you make Zelensky a U.S. citizen. But to make him a U.S. citizen now uh, solves nothing and just uh, further uh, supports Putin's BS about the United States being behind all this. Um, another one that people have said, why don't they just surrender and save their country? Well... That is an option. You could just surrender. But there's been so much blood and treasure and destruction that's happened so far. I mean, you could say the same thing about England during World War II. Hitler um, um, sent messages to England that they could keep their empire if they would not just surrender, but they'd have a detente. And um, after Dunkirk, it looked like you know, like England's resistance to Hitler was going to be fruitless. And uh, it was a close call in the cabinet. Uh, Churchill had a, he had just become prime minister and there was a Lord Halifax who wanted to make peace with Hitler. So they could have surrendered too. Instead, they fought on and Churchill's oratory was inspiring. And uh, and we all know how that turned out. Uh, it would have turned out quite differently if if. Um, England had negotiated a peace with Hitler. Uh, another one was, uh, and this one was really disturbing. Uh, a friend of mine who was a, a, a really talented radio talk show host. I had this discussion with him and he started basically saying, well, it's all our fault because the eastward expansion of NATO should have never taken place, that it threatened Putin. And I, we had to understand that when he has a NATO country on his border, that he's going to be feeling threatened and he has a right to respond to that. And uh, we had the Monroe Doctrine, which was from 1823. I said, we have the Monroe Doctrine. We have Cuba, uh, you know, 90 miles off the United States. but. And, and so I said to him, look, we didn't force any of those nations to join NATO. They wanted to. In fact, they desperately wanted to uh, for the same reason the third little piggy made his house out of concrete. Poland, Czechoslovakia, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, they had all been invaded by Russia in the historical periods before this. So they wanted to join. Why do you think all these countries wanted to join NATO, which is a defensive organization? It's not an aggressive. It's not going to declare war on somebody. Um, it's going to defend these countries from invasion and war upon them. And he said, yes, but we should have, we should have never uh, um, uh, moved NATO eastward in a way that would threaten Russia. I said, well, I said, you're making an apology for Putin. And he said, how dare you say that to me? And I said, I said, listen, it's one thing to understand what he's saying. And not only that, I don't think that's the reason for this. The reason is he wants to create a, a, a greater Russia as it was in the past, a Russian empire. I don't think he was threatened by little Ukraine. Um, uh, but anyway, the person that I was talking to, my friend, slammed the phone down on me and said, don't call me an apologist. And that was the end of that conversation. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Then there was uh, I had an interview on a radio show coming out of Las Vegas and uh, the host who was actually scored some points in the debate said that. Putin demonstrated his ability or intention to drop an atomic bomb because he attacked the nuclear reactors in, uh, in Ukraine. And I said, well, if he's going to drop an atomic bomb, where is he going to drop it? And he said, on Kiev. I said, Russia has 40% of its ground forces in Ukraine. Many of them are circled around Kiev. You drop an atomic bomb on Kiev, you're going to be destroying as well a good proportion of your ground forces there. It's going to, there's going to be radiation that could blow um, 
uh, eastward towards Russia and affect Russians. I said, I don't think he's going to. He said, well, he's just demonstrated that he would do that because they attacked Chernobyl and that other large uh, nuclear uh, energy facility. And they could have blown up. Well, frankly, I did some research on this beforehand. They weren't going to blow up. Every bit of information I read from a nuclear energy expert told me there was no way the cores were, that any kind of bomb, even if you dropped a bomb straight on it, it wasn't going to get through the core. Chernobyl, I believe, was shut down, if I remember correctly, uh, you know, by the time they got there. Uh, but anyway, I'll put the article below this. And ev there's not one of them that said that a, um, a nuclear meltdown was going to be imminent because Russian forces had attacked those uh, nuclear reactors. Then I have a guy who's probably my best friend who married a Russian who listens to Putin information and just thinks he's the cat's meow. She also loves Trump. And um, and she's cheering on the Russian invasion and he but his maybe it's to keep marital peace. But he says to me, oh, you can't believe anything you read in the papers and you can't believe the propaganda that we what we put on is all biased. And you know what? Some of our stuff is biased. There is a bias. But I said, Gary, turn on your TV. You'll see the. The woman delivering her baby who was who was in a hospital who died. You'll see people who were actually there talking about the devastation, how their apartments are destroyed, how uh, uh, you know pl places where they've gathered to shelter from bombs, the civilian targets that are taking place. And he goes, "Yeah, well, you can't really know anything." And pr uh, Putin's propaganda is just like ours, which. I mean, I don't know how you debate that. If somebody believes that, they they believe that. But that led me to my silly proposal. Can't wait know, to hear it. Maybe it's not so silly. Well, it came out in the last few days. The Russians bombed that theater. Uh, and there are people trapped inside the theater. They got about 130 out, but there's more right. people trapped under the rubble. But they had put a notice on the theater for the bombers to see that said children mm -hmm. to warn them, they didn't, you know, Russians didn't give a shit. They just unleashed. And uh, there are children trapped in there. Now, what I think is, and I just read this, the Ukrainians have captured so many Russian soldiers that they have to, uh, they're proposing or they're building uh, prisoner of war camps. Oh, I know them. what you're going to say. <laughs> I'm going to say they should announce we're going to put a couple of because under the Geneva Con, uh, Convention, we want them to be safe. So we're going to put them in the safest places uh, where bombs should not attack our country. We're going to put them in hospitals under guard. We're going to put them in kindergartens under guard. We're going to put them in uh, bomb shelters under guard. We're going to put them in our nursing homes with old people under guard. And then we're going to put on the roof Russian POW. So you know not to bomb those places. And children and, and hospital and, and whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to put the other things on there. Just put down Russian POWs. <laughs> and then you want to kill your, your children and your brothers and your fathers. You know, that's going to be on you. How's is that like a stupid it. idea? I like that idea. <laughs> I like it. All right. I'm going to I'm going to send it off to Mr. Zelensky and see what see what he says. All right. So here in this country, we do have people who are still making excuses for Putin. People who are saying uh, uh, that. Uh, well, who said this just now? Oh, we're going to get to that in a minute. But we had eight Republican members of the House who voted against further sanctions on Putin. God, only, of course, Marjorie Taylor Greene was in the yeah. bunch. Matt Gates. They yeah. Out of the entire Congress, these were the only nutcases who wouldn't go along with it. And Marjorie Taylor Greene has made excuses for him. We know she's a nutcase. But you got to remember, this particular shot, can we see that? See those guys? This was at a Trump rally 
when Trump was president, president. Mm -hmm. I'd rather be a Russian than be a Democrat. Oh, well, some of the uh, Republicans today should be digging out their T-shirts and putting, that's how much they hate Democrats. Um, and somebody who should get a copy of that T-shirt is Roger Stone, who is, I guess, uh, he, yeah, pardoned by, uh, by President Trump uh, for his convictions, uh, never served any time. Uh, who is kind of a nutcase, but he's become a Putin apologist too. Really wildly on one of these, I never heard of this station, but it's called Real America One. Real America. Like the rest of us are living in, I don't know, fantasy America, faux America. Well, anyway, here's Roger Stone on this uh, television or radio station making his excuses for Putin plucking his facts out of either thin air or the crevice between his butt cheeks. Take a look at this. So uh, Ukraine is not even remotely about what they're telling us about. Ukraine is about the fact that the Ukrainians have used their soil to, uh, to place dual launch missile pads, missiles that will be aimed at the Soviet Union. There are, in fact, bio labs there funded by our tax dollars cooking up who knows what pestilence to dump on the russian people uh putin is acting defensively he is not acting offensively but you won't read that in the mainstream media and you won't hear it any place but real america's voice where all points of view are weighed and exposed all right so roger stone said you won't hear that anywhere else well, that's not exactly true. You'll hear it on Tucker Carlson. He's making the same argument that uh, that Ukraine was engaged in creating bio weapons to use against Russia. I mean, it's completely unfounded. How do you there's no factual information to back that up. And it's been uh, dispute, not only disputed, it's been it's been shown to be utter BS since the first allegations were made by Tucker Carlson. But how do you debate against that if it doesn't have facts? How do you debate against somebody who just makes things up? Well, like Trump. Trump would just say something. It had no factual basis. You can't debate that. Um, and we went through years of that. But I, I, Al, Albert was saying before that he thinks this all started with Trump. I think it started when we had uh, Iraq with the WMD. I mean, at the time, it was knowable that each piece of their WMD evidence had no basis in fact. Uh, George Bush came out of Camp David, he was meeting with Tony Blair, and he said to the throng of reporters, the IAEA just came out with a new report, Saddam Hussein is six months away from an atom bomb. That was in early September. Not one reporter in the group said, hey, when was that report released? We follow this all the time. We haven't heard of it. Well, it came out during the following week. There was no report from the IAEA. And they came out and said, we don't know what he's talking about. Then Dick Cheney was on Meet the Press. And he said, it's been pretty well confirmed that Mohammed Atta was in Prague meeting with Iraqi intelligence. Oh, boy. That would be a big one because it would link 9-11 to Saddam Hussein. If it were true, the CIA and the, and the FBI said, well, we have him located in Virginia Beach uh, two days before that meeting was supposed to take place. And Cheney said, well, is it a possibly got on a plane, flew over to Prague, met this guy, and then flew back? And they said, well, yeah, it's possible. But there's no evidence of that. There's no passport indication. There's no ticket purchase. There's no uh, place where uh, there's evidence that he was ever in Prague at that time, unlike Michael Cohn or like Michael Cohn, who was also placed in Prague. Anyway, and the third thing was uh, Donald Rumsfeld came out and said, U.S. forces have just disrupted a camp in northern Iraq, Iraq that was a terrorist facility. Well, it certainly was a terrorist facility. It was called Ansar al-Islam. I had known about it. Uh, but they, he, they weren't being protected by Saddam Hussein. 
they were being protected by the no-fly zone enforced by the U.S. and Britain. Uh, that's where they were located. And beyond that, they weren't allies of Saddam Hussein. They were religious fanatics who wanted to initiate a, a overthrow Saddam and his secular government and create a caliphate in Iraq. And I thought, my God, if they're willing to have their three big pieces of information be so fabricated or flimsy, I mean, what else are they willing to say? And of course, we heard later the aluminum tubes and uh, the mobile weapons labs that were a cartoon that uh, that Colin Powell brought to the uh, United Nations. It was it was just ridiculous. And we had a press that that let us all down. But how do you debate something when there are no facts behind it. Well, at that period of time, I had Neil Cavuto on a radio show. And this was months after the invasion, months after we had scoured the country trying to find it. It was three or four months later. And he was saying, well, we're still going to find the weapons of mass destruction. They are there. I mean, Sean Hannity, who I'd worked with, has said, we're going to find so much WMD, it's going to make your head swim. And then later on, when they found something that the UN had secured and had not been touched, he said, we found the WMD. But the thing that really riled me about Cavuto, and it's, it's in the interview before this, and it was in his book. Let me quote him directly so I don't, you know, I don't misquote him. Those who are against the war and say the evidence for WMD is not persuasive or credible are like the Flat Earth Society. And nothing, no evidence would shake their belief. Yes, people like me who looked at the evidence and found the reason that, that it, it, it was not substantial. We were the Flat Earth Society. And not people who were insisting, oh, the WMD was there, and it is there, we'll find it. It's buried. You'll hear Cavuto say that during the course of this. But as you listen to this, I mean, I, at the time, I thought it was a good interview. I listen to it now. And I fell for every one of the tricks that they use in debate. If you listen to this, you would think that he's the host and I'm on the Neil Cavuto show. Every time I ask him something, he comes back with a question to me. There's whataboutism. When I say something about Cheney and uh, Bush and going to war, he brings up Bill Clinton. Oh, Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton thought there was WMD there. The whataboutism. And then the possibility. Isn't it possible that we will find? How do you debate somebody who says it is possible? I mean, is it possible uh, that people have been abducted, abducted by space aliens and had sex with them in the uh, UFOs? Oh, it's possible. <laughs> but how would you debate that? And finally, that old... Uh, Canard. Oh, you just hate Bush. Which is what you hear these days if you make a criticism of Trump policy or something he has done or some inaccuracy or some phantasmagora that has erupted from the fevered brain uh, that he holds in his cranium. They'll say, oh, you just hate Trump. Uh, Cavuto, Neil Cavuto, who is a Fox News host and, and certainly one of the better ones when it comes to economics. And he's not the most dastardly of the bunch at all. And he's a likable guy. But he used every one of those techniques. So I'm going to play you that interview and you'll be able to hear him use them all. And I, I have to tell you, I wasn't very effective in deflecting them or overcoming them. And uh, until I listened to it recently, I haven't listened to it in, what, it's almost 20 years. But uh, I, I, I think you'll see the technique. All right, let's roll that clip. You believe that those people who were against the war couldn't be convinced by any evidence. I'm telling you, the WMD didn't exist, and there are people on your side who say, oh, it's been moved to Syria, and you have a chapter in your book here talking about how Saddam Hussein buried it or he hid it somewhere. If there was WMD, we would have found the scientists who had been working on it and who would have testified would, and would said... Would you say, Richard, the same thing? If miraculously tomorrow we uncover, as we did, a couple of right after the war commenced and we uncovered what were there some 
F-16s we, we found in the planes desert. planes buried right. in the desert. Right. If, if we can do that and find that, if we can find evidence of tens of thousands of graves, would you at least make the mental leap to say a government that could hide bodies and hide planes could hide other things? Is it fair to say it is possible they were there and then moved? Well, you'd have to say that the WMD came from somewhere, that somebody actually did bury it there. You saw how quickly we found those planes that were buried in the desert. Because what happened is after Saddam Hussein is out of power and we are in control of the entire country, you're telling me it's such a big secret. He took this and he buried it somewhere and yet nobody knows about it. Or it's been moved to Syria or it's been moved to the Baca Valley in Lebanon. And now it is actually in the hands of countries that are closer to terrorists. by the way, you wouldn't dismiss what? the fact that Syria might have a role in arming and supporting insurgents in the country as we speak, right? Well, I would say it's it's possible. It certainly is possible. Okay. It's more, so po it's is more it likely— it possible to advance my argument, Richard, that uh, weapons of mass destruction are not just such a fallacy? There's no evidence of that at all. What I'm saying is this. You're living in a fantasy land that you accuse those who oppose the war of living in. You're living in a lie. Because here's what you're doing, Richard. You're giving the prior administration a complete pass on this very issue. The prior but administration didn't administration, go to war in Iraq. I am saying that this is more than about weapons of mass destruction. I'm saying if the mistake was made on this administration's part, there is it wasn't plane, a mistake. It, it was, was a purposeful. To go it on. was a purposeful misleading of the American public, and a majority of Americans now understand that to be true. So he was. So you're held, in the minority. He now. was held then. To go into war, Dick Cheney was. For, we know it. Okay. Go back and look at the uh, look look at the think tanks that they were a part of. That Dick Cheney and Wolfowitz and and Richard Pearl. Look at the plans that they proposed to Benjamin Netanyahu and and the letter they wrote to Bill Clinton himself, Is Tony proposing Blair that he go of to the war. President's political persuasion or Bill Clinton's? Who would you think? Tony Blair? Tony Blair is of the third way, as you well know, which is the way of finding some middle ground to stay in power and satisfy so more than one people. he's a political puppet, right? He's, uh, on this, Tony Blair, I think, believed that uh, staying close to the United States was more important. Is, is there any curiosity that you have about where or when those weapons left? Presumably they did. I think they were gone by the early 90s, the programs, according to uh, the uh, Sodom's son-in-law who defected and actually went back and was later killed by Sodom. This was not a nice guy. Um, uh, he said all the programs were gone by, I think that was 95, So 96. all the post-bombings we saw by the prior minister were right. a total waste of time. Well, they were they were wrong, okay. except for this. Those bombings were wrong. Except they were, they were wrong in terms of trying to destroy WMD. They were right in this respect. What we did want to do was bring Sodom to a point where he would allow inspectors uh, to come back in. And he was um, obstructing their search in the late 90s. And he allowed Can the I weapons ask you something, inspectors Richard? to come what back in. What has George Bush done right? When, when we had the EP3 that came down over Hainan Island, there were forces in the administration, the same forces that wanted to go to war in Iraq, who tried to send the Sixth Fleet into the China Sea and wanted us to go head-to-head -head with the Red Chinese at that moment. Uh, calmer heads prevailed, and Colin Powell and I think George Bush's father had more of an influence than the neocons did at that time. And it was, we got our plane back, we got our people back, and we went forward with a, uh, a policy of engagement with communist China that was productive. Fine. That was very good. My hat's off to you. All right. So you are fair and balanced. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if... I mean, what do we call them, dead-enders? I wonder if Neil Cavuto is still waiting oh, to find the WMD in Iraq. Um, I don't know. But anyway, you can see there, doesn't it seem like he's the host and I'm the guest being interviewed? He it kind of does a little bit, yeah. And, and he's also flipped it. Every time we talk about something, he goes, well, what about Tony Blair? Oh, what about Bill Clinton? That's the <laughs> genius of what they do. You've got to learn how to do that. What? Yeah. You've got to learn how to do that. Well, or, to well, flag, no, that. or to point it out in the middle. That's not what we're talking about. You know, no, get them back on the on the on the track on on the train of thought that, uh, you know, that is the center of the debate. But I obviously didn't do that. But I answered every one of his questions, including the one where he asked me to praise George Bush for something. And I did. Um but, you know, the other thing that they do is they accuse you of what they are guilty of, which is what Russia is doing with Ukraine as well. I mean, here, when he made that comment, 
that people who denied the WMD evidence were like flat earthers and nothing could shake them from their belief. Uh, in reality, it was those people who insisted that WMD was there who could not shake their belief that it was there even when we couldn't find anything, even when we couldn't find scientists who were making it or find the people who buried it. So who really are the flat earthers then? Exactly. <laughs> That's But there he accused all of us who questioned the WMD. Yeah. So it is the opposite. Anyway, before we leave, I, I almost forgot this. There was a poll that asked, If, if the United States, no, if, 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 if the United States was invaded like Ukraine and suffered in the same way, would you stay and fight for your country or would you try to leave and go somewhere else? And about 38% of Americans said that they would leave. And a larger proportion of Democrats than Republicans, I'm sorry to say. So, you know... It, we're, we're not living in a real red dawn. <laughs> the teenagers come and defeat the, uh, the, you know, the tanks and missiles of a foreign invader. Uh, most people would go live some, not most people, but a good proportion of Americans would go live somewhere else. What would you do? Would you stay and fight? A lot of Ukrainians have. Women, children, elderly have left. But uh, this particular video, I, I believe, is... Is very stirring, emotional, um, and I think uh, quite important to see. Have a great week, folks. And Budmo, you know what Budmo means? It means let us be. That is the Ukrainian toast. Uh, Nostrovia is the Russian toast. But uh, I'll lift up my Obama coffee cup and say Budmo to those Ukrainians who did stay and fight. Ukraine, can you see by the dawn's early light Oh, so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad yellow and blue bars through these perilous fights Over the ruins we watch Are so gallantly streaming With the rocket's red glare And bombs bursting in air We saw day and night Ukraine's flag is still there We say that the Ukrainian banner still waves Over our land of the free Thank you. Slava Ukraine. And our home of the brave